We are going to be talking about robotics this morning, and we're going to be talking about productivity. And for those of you who follow this channel, you know that nothing gets my juices flowing any faster than those two subjects. And they are, of course, hand in hand. You know, unlike physics, there are not too many indisputable laws of economics. But one that stands out is that productivity creates wealth if you define wealth as more goods and service per capita. Just pretty much stands certain on that. Well, you have automation and the subcategory of robotics. Both of those things have already been increasing productivity and thereby wealth for centuries or even millennia. And, but we are currently at a time when those increases will be palpable and even mind-blowing. By taking any robot, whether a car, a Roomba, a massive robotic arm in a factory, or the humanoid form, and adding vision and AI, you have something that provides value on an entirely new level. Just let that sink in. You can basically take anything that is currently an autom does automation and add vision and AI and you have something that's much better than it was before. For instance, as a factory owner, I know that one of the issues was always quality control. And if you have a human involved, you have one level of quality control. If the human is looking at every single piece or every 10th piece or every 100th piece, they can make some decisions about things going wrong. If you switch to automation and you remove, remove the human, you can actually produce an awful lot of product unless you've got some way to check the quality. Now you can put a camera on the line that takes a snapshot of every single one, but even if you do that, sometimes it takes a while before that system gets it right and figures out that they need to stop the line and make changes. When you have AI involved and the AI is watching now in, in video instead of in snapshots, now you can make some decisions much, much faster, and you're going to get a huge increase in your quality control. Your imagination might also turn to other ways that this vision can be combined. You could be thinking about automated ironing and folding of clothes at home, autonomous lawnmowers, also autonomous tractors, and more sophisticated pick-and-place bots in the factory, but nothing compares to the humanoid, which until the last year or so was something still 100% in sci-fi. It took this combination of sophisticated AI and vision to make the human, humanoid robot a serious possibility. The existing humanoid robots that you've seen from Atlas and others, those are hard-coded. They are not running on AI. They are not running as the new, the, the new Optimus will be running on vision in, action out. Now, unsurprisingly, Elon Musk is leading the way <laughs> with Tesla's combination of resources, creating moats around this category, moats around the humanoid robot that no other company can even contemplate breaching. Some might be able to get close on one or another of these moats, but there's nobody out there that has all of them. So first, let's start with massive data from Tesla vehicles and a world-class computer system learning to teach output based 100% on vision only. Pixels in, action out. Nobody else has the kind of data that they can use on a daily basis, new data, new uh, methods of training, new methods of, um, of analyzing the data, uh, in terms of just vision in and then action out that Tesla has. Nobody's even remotely close. You can take that same learning and now apply it to the robot in terms of visual in, in, in incoming and then teaching and training on the action out. They have also an engineering team with over 250 that has been working on Optimus for over two years. And they brought the bot from, the bot from a funny looking machine built out of off the shelf parts to a sleek embodiment that moves with fluid, almost unbelievably human ways. And they've done that in this so short a period of time that it keeps shocking roboticists everywhere. The rest of the world that knows something about robotics pays any attention to this category. They see these, these amazing improvements and they are just 
shocked beyond belief. Now, the most advanced manufacturing capabilities in the world happen to be also be at Tesla. So once you have this product ready to go, now you can put it into production in a way that no company can possibly compare with. They are observably, and probably everybody would agree, that they are the best manufacturers in the world at this point on a category which is one of the hardest to make, which is automobiles. And now applying that to the robots, not such a hard thing to do. And then Tesla will also be vertical because they already know how to make all of the components, virtually every component in the bot is something they already know a lot about, whether that's motors, you know, <laughs> I mean, you 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 get the point. They, they make all these things already. All they got to do is turn it over and make it for the bot and they can be vertical. Again, something to be almost impossible for other bot manufacturers to do, for uh, humanoid robot people to do. They've also got, oh, I don't know, 30 billion plus dollars in the bank and no debt. This allows Tesla to outspend almost any other company in the development of the product. If they, if the 30 billion isn't enough, they could borrow money, they could go back to the markets. They have all kinds of options available to them for ways to be able to get enough cash if they feel like they need more. And then of course, they got this one little moat that nobody can possibly duplicate, somebody called Elon Musk. <laughs> so anyway, all of that to say, Kathy Wood and her group of researchers at ARK and Invest have put together their annual paper, their big ideas report, and they've got a lot to say about robots. So I'm going to pull up my screen right now. But in the meantime, this is Randy Kirk. Please hit like. You know that helps this channel. It just takes a second. Just hit the like button, please. Yeah, just, and then please hit, uh, you know, uh, are you subscribing yet? I need less than 200 people to, to get to 20,000. So you can really help me out today by hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already done that. And then hit notify because, you know, we got Brad Ferguson coming up tonight who will help us to understand what happened in the markets today and with Tesla specifically. So all of that's coming today. Uh, of course, I'd love you to join Patreon and to buy some more of those uh, phenomenal little bottle openers. You you know you want one. So, okay, let's get that screen up here right now. So ARK Invest first slide says, thanks to AI and computer vision, robots should be able to operate cost effectively in unstructured environments. And then they give kind of a layout of all the different kinds of robots that are currently being used in all kinds of different places uh, over time, and they have it on two axes. You have inexpensive on the left end, down to inexpensive on the right end. Then you've got structured environment on the bottom, all the way to, up to unstructured environment up here. You, so you can look at things like, for instance, medical, medical surgical robots. You may know that a lot of uh, surgeries now, there are robots that are involved, including, of course, Neuralink, which is using a major robot to be able to implant the Neuralink device. Uh, those are very expensive and they have to be in very uh, precise kinds of environments. Not totally precise because some of them are designed to be used in the field by uh, military or by uh, people that are, are, are trying to help folks medically in nations that don't have sophisticated medical uh, facilities. So it is possible to get into a, a more unstructured environment, which I guess is why it's kind of close to the line here. Uh, 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 the breakdown between the two. Then we have large military drones. Those are also expensive, uh, but you can see they're trending towards less expensive and they can be in unstructured environments. You have tech robotics. You've got construction bots. These still have to be in fairly structured environments, but not totally. You've got traditional industrial robots. You know, the big arms that come down and pick something up or move it or weld it or whatever. You can see those are mostly in very structured environments and they range in price from very fairly expensive to getting less and less expensive. Autonomous vehicles. Yeah, this one's interesting. I have it all the way from very expensive, of course, in the case of uh, some of the ones that are out there. And then you have all the way to inexpensive potentially in the future. Uh, you have collaborative robots here. You have warehouse robots as being inexpensive, but still needing to be in, in fairly uh, in structured environments. You have consumer drones, which are very inexpensive and can be in very unstructured environments. Then you have humanoid robots. Look at this, very unstructured environments and 
going from not that expensive to very inexpensive. This is the key. This is where the craziness is going to happen. So anyway, interesting chart to give us an idea of where we are today. Now, lower prices are stimulating the demand for industrial robots. So you see that as the, like anything else, we have the supply demand curve. Oh yeah, there's another almost indisputable economic idea. Although I've seen people recently try to dispute it. As things get less expensive, generally speaking, people will buy more of them. And there are exceptions to that, of course. Some people will pay more for, say, a something that's very sophisticated. Uh, they will pay more for something that they think is going to give them more security. Uh, so the price in those cases sometimes creates additional demand because the idea is that if you pay more, you're going to get something of much more value, even though it may not be true. Okay, so then, but in general, it's certainly in the case of robotics, if you're if the price goes down, then the uh, the take rate is going to go up. And you can see from 1996, here was kind of the 2010 was kind of the breakout range. And all of a sudden, you've got the S curve taking place here. In and as we get to 22 and beyond, uh, the take rate in the, the cost is going to go down way more and the take rate and the sophistication will also be going up. So the take rate will get even higher. Then we have increased performance is stimulating demand for industrial ro 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 robots because of computer vision, deep learning have improved robot performance 33 fold in seven years. Robots are already surpassing human performance by a greater than a factor of two, and it's unclear where the upper limit will be. So you can see here that the human is in, in 2022 is capable of 600 picked and packed items per hour. This might be 500, 550, somewhere around there. I can't exactly tell. But the robots in 2015, they were capable of hardly, you know, like 10. And then it was 100, and then it was 300. And then, and here we go in 2022, passing humans by a lot on the pick and place capability. So pick and place is one of the easiest things that you can do as a, a, a little more sophisticated robot can do, but all of a sudden they're extremely good at it. Costs are coming down, value, the value proposition is going up. Next, they say the collaborative robots are entering the sweet spot on the adoption curve. Collaborative robots and humans are likely to operate together, whether on the road, in factories, or at home. Historically, S-curves reach tipping points when the adoption of new technologies approaches about 10% to 20% market share. And you can see here that it, we now are showing collaborative robots as a total percent is past the 10% level. So collaborative robots, again, are those that can work in the, in the situation with another with a human nearby. Uh, doesn't have to be uh, fenced off. Doesn't have to be, uh, you know, no humans going close to it for any reason. We're talking about collaborative robots that can work side by side with a human. And of course, that's what the Optimus robot will be. And then uh, you see many companies are likely to deploy more ro robots than humans in the future. Robots are freeing humans from tedious, and they, she could have said tedious and uh, physically difficult, she could have said uh, uh, environmentally problematic, like cold or hot or whatever, and also things that are dangerous. Um, so those are all kinds of things that the robots are replacing. And right now you can see the, the rate at which this is happening at Amazon. So at the beginning of the year in 2013, Amazon, uh, in 2013, Amazon had about 88,000 employees and they had no robots. And you can see what's happening here with the purple line so that by 2023, they have 1,541 employees and a thousand, I mean, sorry, sorry a million 541,000 employees and a mil, over a million bots. This looks like, of course, by 24, 25, the number of bots will in fact pass the number of humans. So then you have automation's impact on product productivity has transformed industries. They gave three very funny examples, well, one very funny example. So the time to do laundry at home dropped by 87% with the addition of a washing machine. And then you have the time to manufacture a car dropped by 88% when you went from to an assembly line. And now she's saying the time from click to ship at an Amazon warehouse went down by 78% just by adding the Kiva robots. Well, you can imagine, again, 
adding an optimus to the to a situation uh, could be much greater than these kind of de uh, decreases, uh, you know, these these advantages. And the more, of course, product productive you are, the more wealthy you become. That's as an individual, as a company, or as an as a any organization, including governments. Generalized robotics represent a potentially $24 trillion global revenue opportunity. This particular slide did not impress me as much, but I'll just put it up here if you want to take a copy of it. Um, she's suggesting that there could be a 200% productivity uplift from robots by uh, 20, by uh, um, as the take rate gets to 50%, we could be looking at a 200% productivity uplift by 2030, and that that would create $28 trillion of additional um, uh, different ma additional manufacturing output, uh, which would be worth at least $12 trillion per year uh, for people to buy the bots to get that done. She's got this other part of it that has to do with work in the home. Quite frankly, I'm, I don't know. I'm having a hard time with this one. 2.3 hours of unpaid work per day. I 2.8 billion working age population that work are working in the home. Uh, 10.75 weighted average hourly wage for work in the home. Uh, another 12.5 trillion opportunity. I mean, there are things that a robot will be able to replace in the home. I'm looking at, in the home. I think it's going to be more about what you can't get done at all right now for at any price and some things that you'll be able to get done if you have an Optimus robot. Anyway, that is the end of the slideshow from uh, from the folks at ARK Invest. Thank you, Kathy Wood, for all you do in terms of the disruption uh, uh, manufacturing and, and services companies out there. Uh, thank you for all you do with regard to uh, Tesla and following Tesla and making people aware of the incredible things that are going on at Tesla. I'm certainly looking forward to the time when uh, Optimus will be usefully employed at Tesla, at SpaceX, and at manufacturing facilities throughout the country, and then eventually getting into places where we're rubbing up shoulders with Optimus in the, work, in, in the workplace and maybe in our homes. So again, this is uh, 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 my story with regard to Optimus and with regard to the productivity uh, and the help from ARK Invest. If you liked it, please hit like. If you just like the show in general, if you just like my brown sweater, I don't know, hit like for any reason that you can think of. Hit subscribe and notify. Come back tonight. Brad Ferguson's going to be talking a ton about the big numbers today, manufacturing, doing better. That's what gonna be one of the things we'll be talking about tonight. And then um, later this weekend, of course, we'll have uh, Larry Goldberg on Saturday morning helping me decipher what Kathy Wood had to say about the economy this month. All right, that's it. We will see you later. And it's been great talking to you.